smooth like an ordinary day. I woke up, got myself ready for school, um, turned on the news, heard pretty positive things that were going on. People seemed really happy. It was a regular kind of day, but it wasn't going to stay that way. The morning of September 11th, 2001 started off as your average Tuesday. People went to work, kids went to school, and everyone pretty much went about their business as usual. At 8.46 a.m., though, everything changed. And at first, most people didn't even know it was happening. We want to tell you what we know as we know it, but we just got a report in that there's been some sort of explosion at the World Trade Center in New York City. One report said, and we can't confirm any of this, that a plane may have hit one of the two towers of the World Trade Center, but again, you're seeing the live pictures here. We have no further details than that. We don't know anything about what they have concluded happened there this morning. What most people didn't realize is that someone had uh, taken over the airplane or one of the airplanes that day and purposefully crashed it into one of the Twin Towers. Now, I was on my way to uh, college at the time. I'm on the highway, jamming out to some tunes in my car, and all of a sudden it switches from my music to terrified voices, voices that were trying to capture what was actually happening right there in New York. And uh, the, at the same time, the policemen and firefighters, they do what they always do. They made sure that they put other people first and their full focus was how do we make sure that we get everyone in this situation to safety? And so they spent a lot of time trying to evacuate people and then being the true heroes they are, they'd start heading into the buildings. ABC's Don Daler, who is on the scene. Don, just give me some description again of what, you're, uh, what you can see now. It appears that the, there is more and more fire and smoke enveloping the very top of the building. And as fire crews are descending on this area, it, it, it does not appear that there's any kind of a, an effort up there yet. Now remember, oh my God. Oh my God. That looks like a second plane. Dear has Lord. just I didn't see a plane go in. That, that just exploded. We I, just saw another plane coming in from the side. So this looks like it oh is Lord. some sort of a concerted Deliberate. effort to attack the World Trade Center that is underway. So once the second plane hits, that's when people realized, oh, this wasn't an accident. This was probably on purpose. And so they wanted to let our president, George Bush, who's in that picture there, to know right away. He was actually working with children at the time. But um, during that time with the kids, one of his aides comes up and tells him, sir, the country is under attack. And uh, that led to him making sure that he addressed the nation, letting them know what was actually happening. Uh, today, we've had a national tragedy. Uh, two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. This absolutely shocked the nation. That is the courtyard of the Pentagon. The Pentagon is indeed exactly what it's described, uh, just on the other side of the Potomac River um, from the Capitol, and there you see fires burning in the courtyard of the, of the Pentagon, confirming what we had, what we'd been told almost immediately by eyewitnesses. The Pentagon itself has caved in from the top. There is much fire uh, coming out of the windows. Uh, it looks like uh, something from World War II, Peter. So the terrorists or the hijackers of these planes, they took another plane and crashed it into the Pentagon, which is where our military uh, leaders meet to discuss plans that they have. This is as close as we can get to the base of the World Trade Center. You can see the firemen assembled here, the police officers, FBI agents, and you can see the two towers. A huge explosion now raining debris on all of us. We better get out of the way. Let's go to the 
trade tower again were because we now have. They ended up going that, down. They could not we believe have? it. We don't. Oh, it may be that something fell off the building. Peter, it's Don Dealer down here. I'm four blocks north of the World Trade Center. The second building that was hit by the plane has just completely collapsed. It started with a gigantic rumble, folded in on itself, and collapsed in a huge plume of smoke and dust. We are talking about massive casualties here at the moment, and we have... Whew. So as you guys can see, people are terrified. They are scared for their lives here. And I want you to notice they try to get into this building here um, because this huge cloud of debris is coming out from these buildings. Look how dark that gets. Um, I've actually done some research on this. That, uh, that dust cloud, if you will, what it had in it was like shards of glass, metal. It actually ended up causing health issues for people later in life. And I'm just going to add to the chaos and the trauma of the day by saying that a large plane has now crashed about 80 miles southeast of Pittsburgh. Peter, it crashed in an open field. All, that's, all that you really see there is a huge crater. You can't even see it very well from our vantage point. A huge black gaping hole, as investigators are describing it. No survivors, Peter. Oh my God. The second, the second tower. It's hard to put it into words and maybe one doesn't need to. So as you guys can see that cloud of debris with all that shards of glass and with all that metal or metallic uh, state to it, it spreads throughout the entire city. And I remember watching this because when I finally got to the college, we saw this happening. It was terrifying. It, it was very scary. And lots of people were very concerned what was going to happen next. Nobody knew if more attacks were coming. And as you can see from these pictures here, notice that man, how covered in this dust he is that was full of those different uh, materials that I talked with you about earlier. Uh, notice the debris that's all over the streets. If you were in New York at the time, it felt almost like you were in some kind of war zone possibly with everything that was going on. And like I said, People weren't sure if, thing, if this was done. It was a very scary time, especially with so many lives that were lost. So let's talk a little bit about why all this happened. Hijacking a plane is a form of terrorism. That's an act of violence designed to spread fear in others and attract attention to a political cause. The September 11th attacks were carried out by 19 members of a terrorist network called Al-Qaeda. It wants to rid the Muslim world of Western ideas, especially anything from the United States. 9-11 was meant to scare the U.S. into withdrawing support for certain governments in the Middle East. Al-Qaeda would promote revolutions in these nations, then set up religious governments friendly to their organization. And that brings us to Al-Qaeda's larger goal, to hijack Islam itself. They would like the world to believe that they're acting on the religion's behalf, which is ridiculous when you think about it, like, at all. Islam is a major world religion made up of nearly two billion people. It's not represented by a criminal organization. Good question. You might have heard that a guy named Osama bin Laden was responsible for the events on 9-11. Osama bin Laden was the head of the Al-Qaeda network. He didn't personally take part in the attacks, but as Al-Qaeda's leader, bin Laden helped plan and carry the whole thing out. Well, the United States responded to 9-11 by invading Afghanistan, a country that was harboring Al-Qaeda members. Much of Al-Qaeda's organization was destroyed, and certain key leaders were killed. After nearly a decade in hiding, Osama bin Laden was eventually found and killed by the U.S. government. But even as Al-Qaeda has been weakened, other terrorist groups have sprung up in their place. September 11th, 2001 changed me. Uh, 
it, it really made me look at things very differently. And there was a very popular phrase after this day happened, and it was, we will never forget. And when I hear that phrase, I always think of those men and women, those true heroes, that they made the ultimate sacrifice of putting themselves second and trying to help all those individuals out of those buildings or helping someone who they saw were in need. They did everything they could to help others. And there's a memorial here um, that honors those men and women who ended up uh, losing their lives that day as a way for our nation to say, we won't forget what happened that day. And this is our way of honoring your memory. So guys, that's September 11th, 2001. It's a tragic day, but one that I feel we should always remember.